Good morning, Word Warriors. Melissa here, and I have spent the morning on the porch. Just me and the girls, Boo and Lily, and the birds. It's just been a beautiful morning to be with the Lord. And I've been studying out of the book of Psalm and Psalms, and I, I want to encourage you today. That's really what this is about. Psalms is so rich and so powerful. And in Psalms 4, that was David's evening prayer. And when you get to the end of that chapter, or that, yeah, chapter, it says this in Psalms 4, 7. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, and more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. What that means is David was testifying to the joy of the Lord in his soul. He said, I have so much joy in me. I have more joy in me in the midst of the mess I'm in than all the, the corn and the wine, the increase of it in their fields. I have more than they have. They have temporal things, but I have you. And at this time when he's writing this, Absalom is after him and he's fleeing from Absalom. And the, the people of Israel have turned against him and they've gone towards Absalom. And so as you look at this, you think, you know, he said, I'm rich. I have you. I have the joy of the Lord coursing through me. And doesn't matter what other people have. Doesn't matter how much they have. What matters is that I've got you. The word joy appears hundreds of times in the Bible. Joy, rejoice, rejoicing. Those words all mean the same thing. Now I want to encourage you for a minute. In Psalms 126.5 it says, Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. What are you going through today? Just remember, he's the one that brings joy out of every situation. Psalm 16.11 you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence and with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Fill me with joy. You want to know where the joy of the Lord is? It's in his presence. That's where it is. Psalm 71, 23 says, My lips will shout for joy when I praise you. I whom you have delivered. There is absolute joy and confidence in the Lord. And that's why he can have a, have a good night's sleep. I, you know, in, in Psalms 4.8, it says, In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone make me dwell in safety. And Psalms 118.24 says, This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to meddle just a little bit here. You can always turn this off, but no, don't do that. Don't you touch that dial, that button. Don't do it. How many of you can say, boy, I slept good last night. I didn't have a care in the world, not a worry. Didn't think about anything. No turmoil, those million things that can eat at me. That, they didn't bother me last night. Do you know I just read somewhere that whatever we reflect on for the 30 minutes before we go to bed, and go to sleep is repeated seven to ten times during the night. It goes through our, our mind. So you need a clear mind. I need a clear mind. So watch what you do uh, just a few minutes before you go to bed. Let's look at Psalms 5. This is his morning prayer. And we read this a while back, or at least part of it. But I love the part. He wakes up fresh and ready to meditate on the Lord. Just get out and be with the Lord. And it says this. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. In other words, consider the thoughts that are going through my mind. Hearken unto the, me. No, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King, my God. Unto thee will I pray. My, jo my voice shall you hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct my prayer to you and I will look up. Remember me telling you that David set the day in order? That's so important that we set the day in order. I have found out that uh, probably after years of experience and the hard way is that if I have a lot to do and I start with God, not a problem. I get it all done. 
But if I do that first, not only do I not get with God at the end of the day because I'm too tired, but I don't really finish the things that God wanted me to do. See, David was preparing sp himself spiritually for battle. When you walk out that door in the morning, you're going into battle whether you realize it or not. And, and you will be fighting the enemy's arrows coming at you from all sides. You know, looking up is a sign of putting God in a position, but it's also a sign that we are looking expectantly for him. And in, in Psalms 4.3, it says, you can be sure of this. The Lord set him, set apart for, <laughs> here we go again. The Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. We are marked and set aside as his property, his possession. We belong to him. And, and as long as we stay in the boundaries that he sets down, we're under the umbrella of blessings and of his grace. You may be wondering, what are the boundaries? We're, I haven't seen any marks. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. God set down laws and commandments. And, and he said, I'm, I'm watching you because I want to keep you safe. And I want you to have the best possible life you can have. And in order to do that, you need to stay within the boundaries of those laws. You know, when you realize that God wants his absolute best for you, it's easy to fall in line. The blessings of God stay within the boundaries of God. And if you live in the goodness and are in right standing with God, he's just going to shower you with his goodness, his complete goodness. Psalms 27, 13 said, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It says God is good. It's not just what he does. He, it's who he is. He is good, and that goodness never changes. In Psalms 46, <clears throat> the psalmist says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And this is why we can say with absolute confidence, God is good. He's a present help. He's not out there somewhere. He's not up there somewhere. He's right here with you right now. And as long as you're walking with God, <clears throat> his goodness will follow you all the days of your life. Psalms 23, 6 says, surely, good, that means absolutely, goodness and, and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's nothing better than living in the will of God. So remember, expect God's goodness today. He's always taken you to a better place. It may not look like it, smell like it, or feel like it, but down the road, you're going to turn around and go, by golly, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. How's he do that? Because he has a plan and a purpose for every one of us. Amen? I I'm going to end with prayer today. Just be encouraged today. Just be encouraged. Father, I just thank you so much for these people. I pray, God, that Today, you just encourage them in you, and you let them see your goodness. Open their eyes that you can they can see what all you're doing in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great Sunday. Bye. See you tomorrow.